This is Shereen Ryan for In the Front Row, where you get the best view in sports. I'm here with Chris Rodriguez. Chris Rod. Yes. <laughs> new co-host for um, our show. And the internet, you can find us on inthefrontrow.com. We just redid the internet. It looks great. Um, yeah, the website looks awesome. It's great. You can sign up for the newsletter and all kinds of stuff on LinkedIn to our YouTube page, et cetera, et cetera. And um, Chris and I met... Uh, covering the defenders in yep. our favorite team right now yes um, so if you're not aware the D League for the NBA uh, has a bunch of teams a lot of teams have affiliate teams yes so the Lakers have the defenders and the Houston Rockets have the Rio Grande Vipers um, things like that but some of the teams aren't attached so NBA teams can assign players to those teams I yeah, believe to get the minutes or oh yeah the time they need to develop so the defenders have been doing great. They're nine and three. Yeah. They won their last two. Um, Zubats, if if it's a uh, Zubats, has yeah. been on their team for the last three or four games, and uh, he's been performing fantastic. He loves to play, uh, but they had some sad news this week. Yeah, yeah, that a, a tragic passing of uh, Adam of Cave. Adam Cave, and uh, you could see the team really uh, kind of rallied behind his spirit and. You know, they're, they're really playing for him right now. They're fighting for him. And, yeah, you could see everyone was visibly shook by it. Coaches, even from the Lakers side, I mean, everybody yeah. was really hurt by his passing. Yeah, so uh, Adam Cave is 22. He died in a motorcycle yeah. accident last week. Um, the team was told pretty much before the game um, in their practice. They, you're talking to them, um, they're playing for Adam. Yeah. And Adam was a guy who was their video coordinator, and he sat behind the bench. So Vander told me he always knew where Adam was when he was playing, and he would always look at Adam. And, you know, um, Adam was part of the game, and he was happiest he's ever been. So yeah. um, we send our condolences to the team and the family. Yeah, definitely. And um, I know his spirit will be with them. But they are winning. Yeah, they're on a the roll. Uh, they, they look good, and especially uh, Evita, he had a big night last night. Big, huge night. We're talking 20 points, 16 rebounds. Wow, it's not only a double double, but 20 and 16. Yeah, that's and that's something good. that Laker fans. Yeah, <laughs> and that's something Laker fans are dying to see out of a out of a big man. And hopefully, in the next few years, uh, he can take that spot, and that's his, and he can lead that the Laker franchise in uh, you know great things with that young core that they're building now. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit difficult for him because, you know, as, as uh, uh, one of his coaches was telling me, you know, it's hard to be a big man in the in the league this, these days because yeah. every it's going small ball, so they don't even know what to do. They're used to posting up. They're used to always wanting the ball. Mm -hmm. And I've seen if it's a B there with his hands in the air, like five feet away <laughs> from the other player, but no one passes yeah. to him. Um, I mean, he gets passed to, let me tell you. Well, they dish the ball to I him. think D'Angelo like, made it clear to the guys at one of the games. He said, get my get my boy the ball. Right, right. Um, but they, they do a good job. They're all mentoring him. And we, we've noticed little by little that they've stopped mentoring him as much. Yeah. And so they're, he's getting the, the, the jig of it or whatever. Yes. But Vander's still on a roll. The top three there, Justin, um, Justin Harper. Uh-huh. He scored 24 last night. Oh, Vander Blue was on a roll, but last night. It, but when isn't Vander on a roll? Yeah, he's always, <laughs> no, he's either on a roll or sliding, uh, swimming and sliding around the court, yeah. or up with his feet in the air after a layup. But that that guy, talk about attacking the basket. Yes. Um, and the the sweetest person you're ever gonna meet. And then Josh Majette had 15 Assist. assists. Dropping dimes. Against the Rio Grande, oh no, <laughs> against uh, the Bighorns, the Reno Bighorns. So they're going to go on a road trip for a week, and we wish them the best. Yeah, go get them, guys. Um, but now we switch to the Lakers. Yes. So you wonder why? Why don't they bring Vander up? He's the number one, uh, the number one guy that uh, from the D League is supposed to come up into the NBA. So yeah, why, I guess why so. We're finding out now that unless the Lakers decide to drop somebody from the roster, that's the only way they'd be allowed to bring up Vander. Um, so I guess they're kind of. I guess knowing that these injuries that they have are only a week or a week or two long, they don't really want to release somebody or drop somebody down to bring him up. I, I think they just rather buy their time, and it didn't really work out. They lost no. five in a row. <laughs> they're on but. a losing streak, and it's kind of hard. But you know what? They came really close the other night. They, they've come close they a came few really, times, really and, close. And, and you see the disparity happens when as soon as Lou and Jordan come out. It's like all the work they did to get them back in the game right. and maybe a three or four point lead goes right out the window because right. by the time they're back in, they're down seven or eight, even ten sometimes. Well, and without D'Angelo in the, in the lineup, 
Um, you've got uh, Randall just picking up the ball, and now he's the most exciting player on the team. Now everybody's talking, yeah. wow, Randall's going to be really good. And, and let's not forget Nick Young, like we said last oh, time, the diamond in the so rough. so missed that three-point shot. I mean, the way him and D'Angelo, they're spacing, they, they open up the floor with their able to hit the long ball, right? So that helps guys like uh, Julius Randall and even Mozgov get right. get get some room down there to work in right, the paint. Right. And without them there, now you're just seeing the – the lane is clogged with big men, right, and right. It's, there, there's really, it's a lot harder for them to score now, and that's why you see right now 80% of our scoring load right. is coming from the bench, and when before it was a little bit more evenly distributed because you had that, that open space, and right. so we have good news though. Yeah. They're they're set to come back for Monday, the back to back Monday. against Sacramento Kings. And let's hope they're hundred percent. We all have our fingers crossed. I know, yes. right? Because Sweet Lou's doing his his business oh there. My God. Oh, every time you need a three pointer, there it comes. Like even when you don't think it's gonna happen. But I, yeah, you're looking at them like a forty point, a thirty eight point game, a twenty eight point game, another thirty plus point game, and it's like, okay, sooner or later he's gonna have an off night, right? And yeah, it's, it's what not happening. Like one hundred and twenty eight points in three games. Yeah, it's just not happening yet. And thankfully, it's not yeah. happening yet because the games that we are losing, we'd be losing by a lot more. Do you think he's going to get a more prominent role, even with D'Angelo back? I like they come back; they're not always 100. percent Yeah, but I think Luke Walton and and the coaching staff, I, and I think Lou Williams himself, they all love that role he's in. Because when he comes off the bench, that's his unit. There's no question about it. That's his ball to carry up the yeah. court. It, everything's going to funnel through him in the offense. Yeah. And I, and I think they see it. And then the, the plus side is Lou Williams is going up against the second team, the team's, the other team's second second guard. Yeah. And he's not going up against the starter, so he has a little bit more leeway. Leeway, yeah, and it's a little bit easy for him to get his game going because he's not all out there battling Damian Lillard. You know, yeah. he's battling his, Damian Lillard's backup. So, yeah. you know, I think they love that whole – unit together and how they look it looks great right and you know uh his predecessor uh, steve kerr or his mentor steve kerr yeah. um he didn't break that up too much either once uh, yeah once iggy was on the bench iggy came off the bench and that yeah was and when you have a perennial all-star like iguodala in his heyday now he's coming off the bench i mean it's pretty darn good that's all, and i think that's what they're doing they're trying to do with lou williams even though he's never been an all-star but he has been a six man and that six man award looks like it's going to be his this year yeah it's looking really good. Now, talking about awards, we were talking about Coach of the Year and Rookie of the Year. Um, we've heard Joel Embiid because, you know, he has a more Great dominant season. role. Yeah. yeah, not Brandon Ingram. But we also talked about the way the Lakers groomed their rookies. Kobe yes. wasn't Rookie of the Year either, right? No, yeah, it took Kobe Bryant about three years to get off that bench. And with good reason. He was an 18-year-old kid. Same with Ingram. Right. And you want to develop them. You don't want to rush them out there and say, this is your ball. Go. Right, right. Go, go put up 25 shots a game. You don't really want to see that. You want to see the small things happen first. Him rotating correctly on defense, him making the right pass, him getting to the, the right spot on the court to take a shot. And right. the most of all, making a quality shot, not a wild shot. And you see him taking his licks out there because there's times where he tries to go up yeah. in the paint and get a, get a tough dunk or a layup and he gets the ball sent right back to him. So <laughs> it, it's good to see him. Yeah, maybe seven or eight shots a night. You'd want to see about 12, 13 shots, but it's good to see him taking his licks and developing the right way. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, you know, Stanley Johnson, uh, former Arizona Wildcat, he came out young, one and done. Yeah. Played for Van Gundy. Van Gundy's now put him on the D-League. And you said there was yeah. somebody else that went to the D-League. Yeah, well, Nerlens the well from the 76ers, he actually had, it was an injury rehab, but I think he's been down there a little bit longer than he's liked. But, I mean, like we were saying before the show, usually when the guys come out one and done, you could see the difference between the Julius Randle coming out one and done and like Larry Nance Jr. played right. all four years. All four years. He comes in a little bit more seasoned, a little bit more developed. He knows how to make the right play, the right pass. He's not so out of control. And you see with these young guys coming out, they know how talented they are. They just don't know how to quite put it together yet. And they make those bonehead plays and they get a little bit out of control. And sometimes, you know, staying an extra year in college or maybe coming up again, sent back down to the D-League, That'll help your your game, yeah. and you'll be you'll develop the right way. And when you're ready to go, you'll be a lot more effective and, and efficient. Yeah. Well, I'm not I'm not a huge proponent as a mother. I'm not a huge proponent of one and done. Um, <laughs> a lot of people you talk to, they oh they got to get their money. Yeah. But then the money yeah. stops. Don't you want the money to go a long time? Yeah. If the it doesn't work out, that yeah. money stops. But the problem is the NBA. The NBA has now said we only want one and done. 
And yeah. a four-year guy like Caleb Tarzuski, who was dominant in the Pac-12 for four years on the Wildcats, yeah. no, didn't get drafted, right? Well, I think when they Five ended... years, T.J. McConnell didn't get drafted. He fought his way, clawed his way onto the 7-6. Yeah, and, and I think when the coaches say we want the one and dones, I think they prefer to develop their guy over yeah. a college team. But sometimes it helps because not only do they need to develop, you know, in the – for the game aspect, they need to develop maturity and, you know, mentally. They know how to be mentally tough and, you know, be. A, you're, you're coming out a 19-year-old kid. Now you're around grown men, you know, 30-year-old yeah. men, you know, men with families, and they're they're not on the same page as you, you know. And I guess to say in life, you know, they're worried about other things, and you're a 19-year-old kid, you know. Right, right. So your head's kind of spinning. So it, it really does help because you, you can see the difference in the demeanor yeah, of definitely. an 18-year-old and someone who comes out of college at 22, 23 years old. Well, talking about 18, 19 year olds, to wrap this up, yeah. we, I witnessed uh, Gary Payton Jr. Oh, man. drop 51 points in the D-League. What was more exciting, watching Gary Payton Jr. drop 51 or watching his dad scream at the refs on the sideline? <laughs> so Gary Payton, the glove, had gotten honored at um, the Hoop Hall event where um, Gonzaga played Arizona and BYU played USC. Yes. And then afterwards came to the Defenders game to watch his son play. And he was John at the refs. He was John at the <laughs> Gary team. Gary Payton. You would think he's the coach. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, it was very exciting. 51 points. That's another kid who I think, you know, talked to him after the game. He's very mature. Him and Julia, Julian Jacobs, who's on the defenders yeah. from USC, very mature guys. They don't seem like they're one and dones or two and well, dones. Those are the quality guys that you want, guys yeah. that are, are tough mentally and bright, just bright right. guys, you know. So we're here at Rock and Bruce. We love this place. You got to come, yeah. especially on Sundays for football or for basketball at night or even for a good meal. They're just really, a great atmosphere. I mean, look around. It's like if you're into 80s rock and roll, this is a place for you. Yeah. Um, so definitely come on down to Rock and Bruce, and we thank them for having us uh, every other Sunday. Yeah. And we'll bring more uh, information to you. And uh, please follow me at, at Sports Crazy with two E's. Where can they find you, Chris? Uh, you can find me at Blue Collar Sports on Twitter. And we also have at In the Front Row LA. So yeah. follow us and we'll see you next time. If you want to find me, yeah, I'm in the front row With my two tickets, on me, I'm in the front row The best place to be, yeah, I'm in the front row Best place to be, yeah If you want to find me, yo, I'm in the front row With my two tickets, on me, I'm in the front row The best place to be, yeah, I'm in the front row And even hotter than a flame I be in the front row Chilling at a bull game Yeah, you know what they say when you